Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah the Brick. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassador of the Republic of Turkey, the Kingdom of Norway, New Zealand and Switzerland. The ambassador of the Republic of Turkey, Kemal Demirtil, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway, Ovin Stoka, arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. The ambassador of New Zealand, James Monroe, arrived at Sakhir Palace, where he was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The ambassador of Switzerland, Maya Johari Tisafi, arrived at Sakhir Palace where she was welcomed by the head of the royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for her.
The ambassador then presented her credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. His Majesty exchanged with the new ambassadors welcoming speeches on the occasion, hailing the relations between Bahrain and their brotherly and friendly countries and their progress in all fields, wishing the ambassadors success in their diplomatic duties of enhancing cooperation with the kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and of further progress and prosperity to the kingdom, commending the ties between their countries and Bahrain. Also present were the Minister of the Royal Court, the Foreign Affairs Minister, the Royal Court's follow-up minister and the Royal Protocol's chief. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today a number of the royal family members and officials where he reviewed with them regional affairs as well as the government's efforts to elevate the citizens' living standards by developing the services provided. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain is a country that embraces everyone and that it has become a destination for living, tourism and work. He added that the government has initiated a number of projects to make the kingdom more attractive on the economic and touristic levels. The Prime Minister also emphasized the importance of communication among society and embedded this value in future generations to strengthen national unity. He also stated that Bahraini's patriotism has led to making outstanding achievements at all levels.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibia Palace the Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC ambassadors to the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, Kuwaiti Ambassador to Bahrain, Sheikh Azam Mubarak Al Sabah. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister highlighted the unity of the GCC countries and the relations based on cooperation. He also noted Saudi Arabia's pivotal role in the region, adding that the security and stability of Saudi Arabia is that of the GCC. His Royal Highness noted that efforts and sacrifices of Saudi Arabia in throttling plots and debunking conspiracies against the region. He also noted the Gulf military capabilities in facing dangers. The Prime Minister expressed aspirations for more Gulf meetings at various levels of responsibility to increase the Gulf's ability to debunk conspiracies aimed at its countries and people. The Saudi ambassador affirmed the directives of his country of continuous communication with His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, noting his importance in the Gulf and Arab worlds. The Kuwaiti ambassador affirmed that His Royal Highness the Prime Minister is the main pillar for the stability of the GCC, noting His Royal Highness's efforts in bolstering Gulf cooperation. The Emirati and Omani ambassadors highlighted His Royal Highness's pioneering role in supporting the Gulf March and Arab and Islamic unity. During the meeting, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister highlighted the close ties between the GCC leaders and their people. His Royal Highness urged the ambassadors to strengthen relations at the bilateral and GCC levels, stressing the importance to maintain the GCC march and cooperation to overcome any challenges that may face it. His Royal Highness reviewed with the ambassadors the latest regional and international developments and stressed the importance of cooperation and coordination to face the region's challenges, at the forefront of which is terrorism. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa announced the disbursement of the periodic annual allowance to all employees working under the civil service law and who are entitled to it within the salary of January 2018, which benefited more than 34,000 employees after the ministerial edict in January 2017 to continue dispersing the allowance. This reflects the keenness of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister on supporting and encouraging all employees. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, chaired today the Council's weekly session. The Council insisted on its previous opinion on the Shura Council's decision regarding a draft law. The Council insisted on its previous opinion on the Shura Council's decision regarding a draft law to amend a decree law 16 for the year 2002 on the referral of criminal cases directly to the public prosecution. The Council approved a draft law on the unified law to combat commercial fraud in the Gulf Corporation. Council countries. It also approved a draft law amending some provisions of Decree Law 16 for the year 1986 on the organization of tourism and referred it to, the, to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for submission to His Majesty the King. The meeting approved adding a new article in the civil service law and a draft law amending some provisions of Decree Law 14 for the year 1973 concerning the organization of advertisements. The Council approved a request for issuing a statement of Thanks and appreciation of the Royal Directives to stop any increase in tuition fees in private schools. It also approved an urgent proposal on the prevention of parking meters in all neighborhoods. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, expressed his appreciation of the international parliamentary recognition of Bahrain, highlighting the achievements and high ranking positions of the kingdom, which affirmed the effectiveness and role of Bahraini parliamentary diplomacy in light of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Al Mullah congratulated the first Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ali Al Aradi, on being elected chairman of the Interparliamentary Union's Committee on Human Rights of Parliament parliamentarians, which is the highest international parliamentary institution. Al Mullah affirmed that this international accomplishment will add to the Representatives Council's many achievements in obtaining leadership positions in Arab, regional and international federations and parliaments. He also noted the Council's initiatives and effective participations. He continued by stating that the chairmanship of MP Al Aradi of one of the Interparliamentary Union's most prominent committees reflects the level of parliamentary diplomacy of Bahrain and the international recognition of the Council. Al Mullah concluded by praising the Bahraini parliamentary competencies and contributed effectively to developing international parliamentary action.
Good evening and welcome to the Business News on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdullah and let's start with the local stocks. As Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,352.26 points, marking an increase of 7.72 points above the previous closing. The increase was in the commercial banks and services sector. Investors traded mainly in the services sector, with 37% of total shares, 113 transactions, included 6,581,230. 33 shares worth 1,168,887 Bahraini dinars. A business networking luncheon was organized by the American Chamber of Commerce and Industry today, welcoming the newly appointed American ambassador and boosting future cooperation. More on this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. Innovative business ideas, expanded commerce and business were the core of discussions today at the business networking luncheon organized by the American Chamber of Commerce and Industry, welcoming the newly appointed American ambassador who hailed the distinguished level of bilateral ties that have been built over many decades. The business relationship between the United States and Bahrain is very robust, a very strong commercial partnership historically. And I think there are tremendous new opportunities for even further growth. Of course, we start on the very firm basis of a free trade agreement, very close partnership across all economic sectors. But recently, I think we saw on the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to Washington just in November, where you had a lot of American uh, firms participating in some very strategic economic projects uh, here on the island. So we're very, very hopeful about uh, the development here, economic uh, opportunities in Bahrain that uh, American firms can take advantage of, as well as growth in the American economy that I think will benefit Bahraini companies. Since the Bahraini-U.S. free trade agreement entry into effect 11 years ago, two-way trade has more than doubled from 782 million U.S. dollars in 2005 to 1.7 billion U.S. dollars in 2016, and new ways are being identified now to leverage its full potential to strengthen economic relations. Companies are a mix of Bahrainis, a mix of American companies that are here, and we are hoping to drive them one way or another to start businesses in the U.S. and Bahrain. Last November, Bahrain awarded over 10 billion U.S. dollars to U.S. firms in new strategic commercial projects, including Babco refinery modernization, the Alba aluminium smelter expansion, Gulf Air's acquisition of new commercial aircrafts, and much more. With the advent of the new ambassador, who seems to be very pro-connection connect, uh, for businesses, um, this will be a, a wonderful advent to show that Bahrain is open and ready and happy to have new businesses come. Moreover, the growth of U.S. manufacturers and service providers who have established major production facilities in Bahrain are further a testament to the positive environment for U.S. business in Bahrain. Likewise, the U.S. encourages investment opportunities in Bahrain's high growth sectors such as high value manufacturing, industrial services, information technology, healthcare and medical equipment, construction and engineering, logistics, professional services, renewable energy, construction and tourism. A Bahraini-American business networking meeting is here to welcome the new ambassador, unleash investment opportunities and enhance future cooperation. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar. And now to Dubai, as the Dubai financial market today announced the listing of Ithmar Holdings, a company of Bahraini company licensed and regulated by the Central Bank of Bahrain. With the listing of Ithmar Holdings, the total number of listed securities rising uh, to 66 public shareholding companies and the number of dual listing companies is increasing to 16 companies, including five Bahraini companies.